Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we're going to summarize what we've learned in the previous 60 videos. We've gone through the Earth's atmosphere in painstaking detail, talking about each of the types of molecules, the various greenhouse gases that are in our inner atmosphere, and how they interact with the radiation coming both from space and from the Earth's surface back up. We understand that without those greenhouse gases, the Earth would be bitterly cold, almost 60 degrees Fahrenheit or more than 30 degrees centigrade colder than it is today. So we live in a nice, comfortable world because of these greenhouse gases. There's, of course, a concern that if there's too many of these greenhouse gases, it might even get too warm. And so we did a very exhaustive analysis to see if that was indeed the case. Do we need to worry? Well, let's summarize what we've learned and then we can decide if there's a need to worry or not. First of all, we did realize that there's two main greenhouse gases keeping the Earth warm. Those are water vapor and carbon dioxide. And of the two, water vapor appears to be responsible for the bulk of that greenhouse effect. The other four, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone combined account for less than 10% of the total greenhouse effect. The absorption of the greenhouse gases is quantum mechanic in nature. What that means is there is what we call vibrational and rotational modes that are quantum mechanic. They can only exist in certain quantum mechanic states, which means that they can only absorb certain frequencies of the radiation coming back up from the Earth. And because of that, each greenhouse gas is only a certain type of snippet of the total radiation band that they can absorb. And that is why some are more effective than others. Water vapor is extremely effective because they have so many rotational and vibrational modes that they absorb a large percentage of the radiation coming back from the Earth. Carbon dioxide isn't as effective because the only, the carbon dioxide only has one main vibrational mode, the bending mode, which centers around the 15 micrometer wavelength radiation, which is where carbon dioxide is the most effective. And it turns out that that particular band that ranges roughly from about 13 to about 17 micrometers is, uh, is overlapped with water vapor. So water vapor already takes care of about two-thirds of that radiation, absorbs that radiation, so that therefore carbon dioxide can only absorb about the remaining one-third that water vapor doesn't already absorb. They kind of share that, that activity. Then we also realize that the first 20 parts per million that's in the atmosphere, and we're talking about the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, already accounts for 50% of the carbon dioxide greenhouse effect. In other words, there's currently about 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and the first 20% of that already does 50% of the greenhouse effect. By the time you're up to 40 parts per million, now you're at about 70%, and so forth, and you see that it doesn't, that what that means is that any additional increase in the carbon dioxide doesn't appear to have that much an effect on the temperature. We do also realize that there's an increase in the lower troposphere water content, but it's very moderate. So that was one of the drivers of the temperature models. They would assume that an increase in carbon dioxide increases the temperature, which therefore would cause the water vapor content to increase, which therefore would then uh, come back and increase the temperature even more, but that doesn't appear to be happening because plenty of measurements that we've made, we've realized that the water content in the lower troposphere hasn't really increased by that much since 1948. The temperature models do predict much higher temperatures than have actually been measured. They're diverging, so the current measured temperatures pretty well falls below almost all the predicted temperature models that we have available to us. And finally, one more snippet of information. We realized that back in the 1930s, in many places around the world, it was much warmer than it had been for much of the 20th century. It turns out that temperatures today have not been higher than those that we saw in the 1930s. It turns out in the 1930s, that is where half of all the states of the United States set their all-time temperature record, which means that since then, they have not been broken. And the number of high temperature records set more recently far, are far outshadowed by the many cold temperatures that were set but in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. So again, it doesn't appear as if over the last 80 to 100 years the temperatures have changed that much, and therefore we don't feel that the greenhouse gases have had that much of an effect on the change in the temperature.
And that's the conclusion we draw from looking very carefully at all the various aspects in a scientific matter about Earth's atmosphere.